Hello, welcome to Spirit of Life. My name is Geraldine Lee, your host, and our guest is Norman Gill. He's the Regional Director of Community Services for the Salvation Army. Welcome. Thank you. <laughs> uh, it's great to have you here, Norman. And um, I'd like to know also about your faith, your faith journey, before I go into the details about your role as the director. Okay, thank you. Well, it's a pretty long story, I suppose, because I've been on the world, uh, on the earth a long time. But um, I, I have been brought up through a Salvation Army home, so I had a lot of uh, background, I suppose, in my early days. Mm -hmm. But I'd say in terms of my faith journey, uh, it really started from the time I, I was at university and went through quite a bit of doubting of my, my uh, I, I would say, junior faith uh, and, uh, you know, Sunday school teaching and that sort of thing. Uh, but through that time, I, I really found the writings and the teachings of um, a number of people quite helpful, uh, particularly C.S. Lewis, and he seems to be taking a bit of a revival at the moment, a lot of his books. Uh, I found his, his uh, information and his books quite helpful. Um, but honestly, just from a life point of view, um, although I, I sort of experimented with other uh, ways of living, uh, I really uh, found that I was attuned more to uh, the, the, the life and teaching of Jesus. It, it had a great impression on me. Uh, and I found that what I would really wanted to do and found uh, made sense uh, was to follow Jesus and to uh, live according to his teachings. Uh, and that's something that didn't necessarily come uh, easy, but it was something that has grown uh, with me for uh, over the over the years, uh, and certainly has been something that's given my life purpose and meaning. Uh, so I'd say that that's uh, something that I've uh, really appreciated and uh, resonated with uh, over many years. Oh, that's fantastic! And so you were in in your young years, you were a recipient of the Salvation Army. Well, I was a member. My parents were members as well, oh. so I, I, I guess I had that, uh, you know, background mm. for sure. Yes. And what aspects of C.S. Lewis really attracted you? Well, I, I, I like his uh, mere Christianity. Very, it was a very uh, basic sort of book, and and talked about um, uh, almost first principles uh, thinking, um, the way he looked at the world, uh, the way he sort of related. Uh, Christianity to um, everyday life uh, were, were things that resonated with me. Mm. But he wasn't the only one, and there were others uh, a little later on that were perhaps more uh, radical thinking, uh, particularly we look at people who were uh, working with the poor, working with um, uh, people in uh, you know, more revolutionary sort of uh, backgrounds uh, and circumstances. Uh, and these, these were the themes that sort of st stood out for me and uh, that I, I could, um, you know, understand and, and feel that were quite important in giving meaning to life. Hmm. So the, there's a ver the word salvation army does seem to say to me that salvation is a very important thing to the salvation army. Uh, what does the word salvation mean for you or for the salvation army? Well, I guess it's uh, easy to say what it is for the Salvation Army because we're talking about um, uh, following Jesus and, and uh, the message that Jesus came to, to teach about being saved. Now, uh, what does that really mean for people? It's, it's a different thing for different people. But uh, what I found uh, important uh, from, from that, that uh, word is really, if you go back to Jesus' first mission statement that he made, uh, where he talked about, you know, um, making the blind to see and breaking the chains for the prisoner and setting them free. And for him, that was salvation, was saving people from their, their chains, so saving people from the things that bind them back, mm. hold them back. Uh, 
Uh, and that, that sort of uh, theme, I think, is a very important one. It's certainly an important one to the Salvation Army. And, uh, and I think even these days, you know, the, perhaps some of the old, older ideas of, you know, you have to be saved, you know, otherwise you're going to go to hell or something like that, um, is not, not such the main, main issue. It's, it's really more about living a, a good life and living a life that isn't bound back by, by habits and by um, uh, the, the, the binds that, that can tie us to, um, uh, you know, to, to captivity and, and really being a, a free person who can and live in the way that God wants us to live. Um, and that's not just a matter of having a relationship with God, but it's also uh, giving to other people and being uh, responsive to the needs of other people. Mm. And I think that that out, outwardness is a very important part of, of faith. Yeah, I think, um, yeah, I think it would be true. I think sometimes when you hear the word salvation, I know early in my faith that um, the thing of Jesus down the cross and saving me from sin in a sense that I can't wash away my guilt through my own good works, but mm. more through his mercy and love. Is that the, also the salvation story of Jesus' death being the ransom for our sins? Sure, and, and I guess that's a, a traditional Christian message, and it's certainly mm. one that the Salvation Army, uh, you know, ag agrees with and, and promotes very strongly. Mm. Um, and I think that the, um, you know, the 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 idea of of what uh, why Jesus came, uh, to me, it was a lot about the way he lived. Uh, his teaching, uh, and the way he showed us how we can respond and should respond to to God, and to live as a as a mm. as a child of God, if you like. Uh, but a lot of that has to do with how we deal with other people and how we respect other people, mm. and uh, and how we are here for other people. Yes, no, that's a, a good thing to reflect on. You know, if what. The Salvation Army have, have been doing and what you've been doing, serving God. And we're going to go for a break now. Okay. You've been watching Spirit of Life. We'll be back after the break. <laughs> Welcome back to Spirit of Life. My name is Geraldine Lee, your host, and our guest is Norman Gale. He is the Regional Director of the Community Services for the Salvation Army. Hello, Norman. Hello. Welcome back. Thank you. Um, you were talking about um, the Salvation Army, um, how that was the beginnings of your faith journey and your parents being in the Salvation Army. Yeah, um, I'd like to know how you... Um, came to um, be involved in the Salvation Army and working for it. Right, so my work uh, with the Salvation Army in this role of community uh, engagement uh, has only been the last 12 years or so, so not, not a very long time in some ways. Um, and private, previous to that, I, I had a role in uh, professional life in engineering, sales and marketing, uh, technical uh, uh, field yeah. in telecommunications. Yeah. So it's a very different thing that I'm doing at the moment. Um, but I felt at this, a certain time that, um, you know, although I, I really enjoyed uh, the work that I was doing, uh, I wanted to get more involved with uh, grassroots and also to uh, be more in the, um, well, you, you'd say the helping profession, I suppose. Um, and of course, being a member of the Salvation Army all my life, I, I've been involved as a volunteer um, and you know had contact with people you know in the way in which that uh, op those opportunities do arise um, so but I felt that it would be good to to do that you know in a working capacity mm. uh, as, a, as a job so to speak um, and the opportunity did come up so in my local branch local church if you like uh, there was an opening for someone to run the community services there. And uh, so I put my name forward 
I said, yep, I'd like to do that. And uh, it would just give me a, a better opportunity to do, not exactly full time, but more intensively, something that I'd probably been doing as a volunteer for many, mm. many years. Yeah, that's great. So you work part time there. Right. So currently, my my role is yeah you know, three days a week. So it's yeah. it's, it's a part time job, but it, with all part time jobs, they tend to take more hours than That's right. you really um, mm. are paid for, so to speak. Yeah, and what do you find um, stirs you on? Because the the work you know can be quite stressful and bring could potentially bring you down. What keeps you going? I think it's a very inspiring place to be mm. uh, because. The thing is, and it's a very humbling place to be mm. because people come to our centre uh, obviously in need and, um, and and for many people it's a tough thing to be saying, well, I'm going to go to the Salvation Army to get some help. You know, that's not something everyone wants to be doing uh, and there's a certain degree of reluctance, I, I suppose, quite naturally. Mm. So uh, when people come, I, I feel they've made a big step to do that mm -hmm. and so they need to be given you know respect and be treated uh, well um, I uh, am amazed by the sorts of struggles and uh, difficulties that people have in their lives uh, I guess in some ways I've had a fairly easy life in in many respects but the people come through our doors uh, often uh, having really tough times and that I find very humbling and so to find how we can provide some support uh, sometimes it's it's moral support sometimes it's uh, emotional support sometimes it's physical in terms of uh, financial support or food parcels and things like that um, and sometimes it's direction or advocating on their behalf uh, to do some things um, and, and so those, those are uh, really the things that keep me going because I can see what a difference can be made. You know, when somebody has a friend or has a, a person who can come and give them some assistance, sometimes advice, uh, sometimes it's just being there to listen to their story, mm -hmm. uh, to take on board their story, uh, to uh, help them feel that somebody else cares for them. And I think those sorts of things are the things that I, I come home at night and feel, my goodness, you know, wow. what happened today? It was just amazing. And, and so when those, when those times do happen, I really, uh, you know, feel quite inspired really by, by other people who are coming mm. through the door. Mm. And in your organisation, you accept um, all people from all religions um, and all sexual identities and all kinds of... Oh, absolutely. Of, yeah. um, uh, there's no question about that. Um, I mean, we're, we, we take the words of Jesus literally um, and we're there for everybody, uh, regardless of their colour, creed, uh, mm. background. Uh, it was... Uh, interesting one one day a fellow came to for some assistance and uh, we provided him with a with a food parcel and listened to his story uh, he retired to the uh, to the washroom and came out with a lovely wig on and a dress and was sort of changed overnight uh, well not overnight but just immediately there and he was given the respect uh, or now she was given the respect mm -hmm. uh, just as if nothing had it, it mm. happened, and I, yes. I, I think that was uh, a sympt uh, uh, symptomatic of the way uh, people are uh, mm. regarded and, and treated uh, the, the, within their own context. Uh, mm. So that's definitely the case uh, mm. uh, in the way that we treat people. Yes, no, it's gr it's beautiful when you um, accept people where they're at and love people where they're at. And I've been to some of your centres, and I've you know experienced that the dignity. That you give to mm. the clients, which is, which is what Jesus does. Mm. So um, yeah, well done. Mm. Um, and with the work you're doing, do you also um, like are your families involved to support you too, or do they get involved, or are they allowed to? Uh, well, of course they're allowed to, but uh, within the context of the services we provide, mm. uh, we do have volunteers 
uh, involved in those services and they come through a volunteer process. Mm. So if members of a family wanted to be involved, they'd have to go through the same process as mm. everybody else. Uh, but this particular uh, centre that I'm working at at the moment, actually my wife started this up years ago. Wow. And, uh, and so I'm sort of following on her footsteps yes, in a way. Yes, so you're passionate um, about it. So, yeah, we, I get quite a bit of support from her. Yes, so uh, we may need to go for a break now. Oh, okay. You've been watching Spirit of Life. Stay with us and we'll be back after the break. <laughs> Hello, welcome back to Spirit of Life. My name is Geraldine Lee, your host, and our guest is Norman Gale. He's the Regional Director of Community Services for the Salvation Army. Welcome back, Norman. Thank you. Um, it's great to have you. And I was wondering with the what you were talking about, um, whether you have seen in the work you do uh, at the Salvation Army, um, life changing, you know, like where you see really they responding with your care because you sometimes work with people for many years. Yeah, yeah. I I, I guess some of the um, people we work with is, is we know over a long period of time, um, but then some are more intensive, um, you know, periods of time as well. Um, I'm, I'm thinking of one particular person who. Um, was presented to us as, as having some difficulty and and potentially at, at risk of homelessness, uh, mainly because he didn't have a job, uh, he didn't have any real form of income, very limited income, and uh, he'd been jumping around from one place to another uh, for a while, uh, doing a little bit of busking, uh, but really not very stable. Uh, and he, um, he really needed some support because his capacity wasn't uh, uh, wasn't brilliant in a way, and he needed to. Um, well, of course, it would be good if he could get a job, but but he would otherwise have to be, you know, out on the street or or, or finding some other sort of form of accommodation. So we spent quite a lot of time with him, um, and a lot of that was, you know, personal support type of thing, just just listening to his story and, and, and being with him. He did have um, a, a church background uh, with the Mormon faith, um, and so that was something that was, was helpful because he had a, a little bit of a support network. Uh, but uh, a lot of people tended to give up on him because he had a short temper as well, <laughs> and uh, this wasn't so easy. You know, he'd often get himself into trouble. Uh, by getting into arguments and then getting physical, so we we um, we really needed to first of all advocate on his behalf with the place he was staying at, uh, in an attempt to get them to buy him some time, give him more time to find some income. Uh, we work with some of his support uh, people, um, and we also. Uh, you know, showed in a way um, the practical side of, 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 of the love that we, that we mm. had for people and it was something that started to communicate with him. Uh, so much so that he, he really um, built a strong sense of trust mm. with us um, and was, you know, very um, much more vo motivated to mm. do the right thing for himself Mm. Uh, and to find work and to, you know, find a bit of income. Mm. Uh, along the journey, uh, you know, he, he came out with some really unusual things at times. Well, we, we found them probably surprising in a, in a positive way. Um, we, he came along to our, our little house church um, uh, meetings that we had from time to time. And uh, occasionally he'll, he'd come out and say, you know, I, I'd like to pray tonight, you know, or or how come you're always the one that prays? You know, we should share this around. Mm -hmm. um, and so he he was able to uh, respond and uh, uh, demonstrate something of the growth of his faith mm. at that time. 
eventually he did find a job and he managed to um, stay in his housing uh, and he often would, when I'd call him up and say, how are things going? He'd say, you know what, um, this has been uh, you know, a blessing from God that I've been able to um, cope with my anger and, and, and uh, a, um, you know, uh, anxiety and that sort of thing and actually stay in a place uh, and stay in the job, uh, continue to have an income uh, and to live a much better life. So, you know, it's a combination of, of, of different aspects of a person uh, where that has made a difference. But his, his faith has also grown, uh, the way he expresses himself um, and, the, and the life that he's living, you know, has made a, a huge difference for him. Mm. That's fantastic. And, it, and so you all not only give practical help, you also have that time, that quality time where you spend to get to know your clients yeah and it depends on the person I mean we try to respond to their needs so if if somebody uh, for example expresses you know uh, a desire you know would you pray with us uh, then we're able to do that mm. um, and uh, often uh, just by I introducing people or asking people you know would you like to participate in this or that activity uh, because we're based on the local church, if you like, the local Salvation Army Corps, um, we don't have just the community uh, outreach activities or the welfare program. Uh, we also have our children's programs. We also have uh, our worship services. So people can be invited along to those things if they mm. want to. And obviously not everybody... Uh, wants to participate in the rest of, um, uh, of, a, of a church program. But uh, very often, um, you know, we see a lot of single mums and uh, if they've got infants or young kids that are not going to school mm. as yet, uh, too young, uh, they're welcome to come to our mainly mm. music program and quite a few of them do that. Mm. Uh, and just to link in with other people and make some friends yes. uh, as well as be, uh, participate in other ways. Yeah, so you run a children's program, you, you refer people for homelessness, you, you run a soup kitchen kind of thing. Where there's a number of different that? programs. So, yeah, yeah. There's, there's a food program. Uh, we do uh, are active in the local public housing uh, mm. estate where we run a, a homework group uh, to give kids mm. uh, support and that's primary primary school level kids. Yes, so. that's fantastic. So you really um, are showing God's love unconditionally and, and you also respect people where they're at. So in spite of, you know, um, having no religion, you just help them. When, and then if they would like to come to church, you, you have an open door sure. to them too. We, we try to respond to the needs of the area. And of course, Burundara, where we're mostly based, based is quite a wealthy area. Mm. But... Um, uh, we've started up a mig migrant program. We provi provide pronunciation classes. Oh, good. And uh, the, the people coming to that class, you know, include some uh, from Iran, mm. uh, Asia, various parts of Asia. Fantastic. And South America. Yeah, it's been great having you. And uh, I'm very interested, been very interested in what you work. And I wish you all the best and for your work. Goodbye and God bless you. Thank you very much. You've been watching Spirit of Life. Join us next week. Goodbye and God bless you.